Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. My name is Sophie Moon. Today on the episode, we have... On the menu today, we have our holiday in Mykonos. We have Jamie's burnout. Yes, it's not a funny subject, but it is It is intense. We also have Jojo, our interior designer, coming on the podcast to talk about our house renovation. We have listeners' messages, as always. And we also have Sophie's mating call that she calls me every single time I come into the house. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to the podcast of dreams, the podcast of life and love and happiness and glory. The podcast, Mm -hmm. where when you close your eyes, you transpire into a different world. Transport. The podcast where when you close your eyes, you transport into a different world, a world of love and happiness. Who are you looking at? Who are you looking at? Why are you looking at? The floor. Why are you looking at the floor? Because I'm transporting myself into a world of love and hope and happiness. You're, honey, you would you would transport straight into a world with me. That's what it would be. I'm already in that world with you, honey. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from our travels and wow, oh wow, I'm tired. <sighs> Guys, snore fast. No, it's not Whoa, a snore fast. Woe is me, I went on two holidays and I'm tired. I, I've realised that I've had comp- I've had a bit of burnout. That's what I've had. And people will probably go, wow, 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 what's burnout, what's burnout? I have experienced burnout. I've experienced burnout before. No, God, it's always back. Like, Well, let's bring it back to me. I have. No, you haven't. So I can s- Whoa. No, you yes. haven't. You don't know what it feels like. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I, I went to a functional medicine person. She said, you've got burnout. She said, you are, that's too much for the body. And she said, I had low iron as well. Okay. Two things. There is so much to catch up on today. Firstly, I mean, my brain is going absolutely wild because I'm thinking about so many things. What are you thinking about? Well, we're going to talk about Mykonos, as we said, and all that kind of stuff on our holiday. But let's just focus on this functional medicine officer. Uh, doctor. Sorry. <laughs> let's focus on this functional medicine doctor that you yes. went to. That you also sent me to. I hope you're not going to say anything bad about her on here because... I want to go back. It was the biggest waste of money I had in my in my entire life. I went into this room and I spoke to this person and all they did was talk at me for an hour. They were just talking at me for an hour. Good. Give someone else a chance to talk for once. And the only thing that they did say is I said, oh, I've been feeling a bit funky after my wife told me to do NAD, which we've spoken about on the podcast, where it rejuvenates the cells. She said, don't do that. It causes bad things. It's the only thing that I learned from it. Okay, well, you obviously weren't listening. I was listening. And you don't do your research. And I know you You would have been like on your phone halfway through. I really enjoyed it. I've got to do a test. I've got to pee in like a cup and send it off to them. Do you really? Mm. Do you remember that? They test the top half of my gut, which I'm not sure what we'll do because surely I should be testing my whole gut because what happens if my top half's great but my bottom half's shit? Like, we're never going to know. Only tops test the top half. Do you remember the time? (laughs) Yes, I sent a poo sample off and it got returned to us. I remember. (laughs) Sent her shit in the post. (laughs) Why do you have to say it like that? You didn't send a shit. I didn't send a whole shit. I sent a sample. I didn't shit in an envelope and go, off you go. I sent a sample (laughs) that loads of people do. And it got sent back to us. Two months later. (laughs) What the (laughs) Two hours later, I was like, what's this? Return to Santa. Oh, so <laughs> shit. Why the fuck? Was it some sort of joke? They obviously, like, someone hates me, saw my name, was like, oh, I know that Lisa, let's send it back to her. <sighs> he shat in a bag and then they sent it back. I didn't shit in a bag anyway. Let's move on. You are very obsessed with your whole kind of healthy being and your body and your gut and all those different things. And I'm with you, honey, but that I'm not very obsessed. I'm just healthy. No, you are pretty obsessed with it. You are obsessed with no, it. No, no, you There's you a have... new lotion and potion coming every day. That's nothing to my gut. You have no idea about anything, and that's why I appear obsessed because I I'm so he just has no idea, guys. No idea. He's burnt out, he's tired, doesn't do anything to help himself. I am a little burnt out at the moment, to be honest. And it's it's a little overwhelming. And today, it's, it's still a little bit more anxiety. So what does burnout feel like for you? Um, well, we went on holiday to Mykonos and I had to sleep a lot of the time. I just sleep a lot of the time. And so normally I don't sleep that much and I was tired all the time. What part of sleeping from midnight till eight on a holiday is sleeping a lot of the time? No, I was sleeping more. I was tired. I could have slept all day. 
I had naps in the day. I slept on the plane. Did you sleep? No. Because I didn't see those eyeballs close once. No, because I'm not very good at napping. So you didn't sleep much? No, but I Actually, could... I think you went to bed probably uh, later than that. It's just, honey, it's just, if I'm honest, there's been a lot going on. You know, we... I, I, I've I been doing radios, podcasts. I've been doing... We're g- renovating our house. All that's so stressful. Guys, we have one week until we get our keys. It's all very exciting. There's a lot going on. You you have baby fever on the mind. Everyone who has a baby you're obsessed with. A real baby fever, guys. She has beyond baby fever where every day she's like, should we do it now? Oh, no, let's not do it now. Should we do it now? Oh, let's not do it now. It's like it's like a yo-yo and that's quite stressful that's as well. That's not stressful at all. That's wonderful and lovely in every way. It is a little stressful, but I'm okay. Do you know what? I'm okay. How was Mykonos trip for you? Mykonos trip was so... <laughs> Mykonos. Mykonos trip was lovely. I think we spent 60% of our time on a quad bike. Yeah, we did. Maybe 80% of our time on a quad bike. Three hours one day, by the way, we drove around on a quad bike. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to tell him because I'm having the best time on the back of this quad bike. We arrive out to Mykonos, guys, to Greece, and Sophie has booked the hotel. And... This is a typical thing which happens to us. It was a complete disaster at the beginning, as always. As every single trip that we go on has a little bit of a disaster. We arrive out there. Uh, before we get out there, Sophie's telling me what hotel we're staying in. So, Sorry, you are so spoiled and I just can't even believe that you're going to tell this story. I am going to tell the story because it's, 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 this is your planning, which was not good. Sophie has organised this trip to Greece. I'm very excited about yeah, it. Yeah, thank you very much. Wonderful wife. And she tells me what hotel we're staying in. So... What I do is I do my due diligence. When? The week. No, the night before. No, the week before I did. I was looking at the hotel that you had booked and that you were showing us. So I was checking out the hotel and I was looking at the hotel and I was going through the whole kind of hotel and just looking at it and all this kind of stuff. And it was really nice. I thought, oh, this is great. The day before, Sophie tells me that we're staying in a different hotel. So I'm like... I got them wrong. So I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So I then Google the hotel that we're staying in and it's basically on a ferry. It's 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 in the port, like it, like basically all, like in the water. It was a boutique hotel. Sorry that you want like me to take you to the Four Seasons every time. No, I didn't. You pay. I did pay. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I do pay every time. No. <laughs> yes. Well, that's your stupid fault. I go to the loo every time we're at checkout because it's so long, and by the time I come back, you pay. So. I start speaking to you about this. I don't know why these words are coming out of your mouth. Are you serious? Yes, I'm being serious. I phoned up Sophie and said, have you seen the hotel? Like Sophie, the spoiled brat you are. Sophie blew her lid at me. She went ballistic. I like you were You're s- the biggest hotel snob I've ever come across in my life. I'm not a hotel life. snob. Uh, so what? I, I'm a traveller. I went travelling. You are I, not a traveller. You you, you you are not a traveller. You went uh, travelling to South America. And stayed and, in hostels every single night. Uh, no, you didn't. You hated it so much. You phoned at your parents and asked to get put in a hotel. That's no, what happened. I didn't get allowed. <laughs> yeah. They said no. Yeah. Screw you. And so I cried in the hostel on my own. And my friends all went to a hotel. <laughs> on my own. And I woke up, guys. What I the? kid you not. It was so hot. Costa Rica. I didn't have the duvet on me. I was like, pff, I woke up to the flashing light of a guy on the bunk bed <laughs> taking photos of me asleep. And I was like, please, dad, let me get out of here. He was like, no. Anyway, what am I like on holiday? Give it to me. You apply sun cream just in the morning mm-hmm. and you are very, very fair, as we know. And you don't apply it for the rest of the day. And then you complain because you think I should have been applying it to you and you're a little bit burned. What else are you like? <laughs> Can't think. You're quite normal on holiday. What the Sorry, my chat. It's really oh, not. Sophie, by the way, guys, has lost all social skills. I don't know what's going on with Something's me. Something's like, happened to her. And I, we don't I, understand I, I why. don't know what's going on. Like, I can't bear to explain how awkward and weird I'm being at the moment. Like, it's so weird. It's so odd. She's being so awkward and weird. So strange. I, I kissed, <laughs> I bumped into someone today with a helmet on my head on the back of a moped and I double kissed her <laughs> with a helmet. She was like, you're knocking me out. Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on with me, but my social skills are completely off. I can't, the words... <laughs> Uh, to have a conversation, they're not coming out of my mouth. What I'm not? being so odd. I bumped into um, an ex made in Chelsea cast member. I bumped into Tris Phipps yesterday and I stood 
over him whilst him and his this girl are having a dinner. I literally just stood in their meal, just like staring. No words coming out. I, I can't explain how weird I'm being. It's not right. I, I honestly think it's because you're drinking energy drinks. No, oh my God, I haven't had an energy drink. You have, you had one now. Jamie, it is not because I'm taking drinking a matcha drink. I think it is because you had one yesterday as well. No, you're insane. I it's swear not. to God it is. It isn't. I was really, really awkward and weird on holiday too. I what? didn't have one coffee for 10 whole days. There were times I was just like, just no words can come out. <clears throat> Sophie, Sophie you, you has been quite weird recently to the point where you have this new sort of mating call when I come into a house. No, I don't like this one. What do you think I'm going to say? I don't know. <laughs> you have no idea. I what don't I... like it at all. You have... You've got to stop with the mating call thing. It's not a mating call, but it's, it's, it is it's a weird thing that you do when I come into the house. It's it's like a thing that you say to me. No, but it's disgusting. If you say that out loud, I literally will not talk to you ever again. I'm going to have to. And by the way, I will tell everyone what you say then. No, you can say what I say, but I can say what you say. I come into our house, into our flat, from like a lovely long day of working. And the way I know Sophie is in the house... <laughs> Is she shouts this at the top of her lungs when I come in? Suck my clit and call me Sally Clark. <laughs> she oh says. And if I don't say the word <laughs> Sally Clark back to her, she I gets actually, annoyed. No, no, that's not going in. You're, you're honestly. <laughs> you're insane. I didn't know what I said. <laughs> the funniest thing is. No, no, the funniest guys, thing there's is, a story behind this. Wait, the funniest there thing is. There is a story behind this. The funniest thing Sally Clark is the coffee shop. Suck my clit and call me Sally Clark. What Why the coffee shop? Why are you... <laughs> Guys, I need to explain. Uh, can you I explain don't want it? I take... suck and... my clit. I don't even know if you can do that. <laughs> I don't even know if that's possible. I don't think it is. I think you don't do that. I don't ask for that. And if you ever did try to actually do it, I'd kick him in the face. That is not the case. We watched Bora and he said, suck my clear. It was like, <laughs> he didn't. He never said that. It's Bora that said it. Well, Ali G. No, he's never said They did. They did. That's where it came from. It came from something like that. He says, very nice. We... Oh, right. Very right. nice. <laughs> he doesn't say, suck my clear. <laughs> In my head, I thought he did. So I get going so angry. <laughs> the language we have is unhinged. It's so odd. But forever we have said, smack my bum and call me Sally Clark. <laughs> <laughs> this small bakery. If you knew what this bakery is like, it's like the most demure, demure gorgeous bakery. And we're like ever, being so outraged about it every day. We're like, Sally Clark. <laughs> we call each other Sally Clark now. Oh, uh, it's or Jesse J. <laughs> That's the other one. <laughs> what is going on? She says, and then so no, goes don't, on to, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> She does. Uh, you do. Then you'll go like smack my bum and call me Jesse J. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to say Jesse J. <laughs> Who the fuck is Jesse J? She's a singer. <laughs> it is Jesse J. And I think about it every time I say it. <laughs> Oh, God. Now people are starting to worry about me because I'm being awkward and really saying like weird things coming out of my mouth. What we haven't mentioned um, is what happened on our, our flight out to Greece. I've never seen in my life Sophie freak out. <gasps> She's doing it now. Oh, like, my God. Wait, you no. I haven't told you. You're going to die. <laughs> You're going to die. I was sitting on the flight, about to go out to Greece. Meanwhile, I'm a bit worried about this hotel. It's, a it's bit, like 6 a.m. by the way. It's about 6 a.m. in the morning. And Sophie's sitting next to me and she does this. She goes, oh, my God. 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 So I'm like, what is like, what is going on? Like, I was like, what the hell is going on? She grabs my arm and says, there's one of the desperate housewives. Bryn from New York was in front of me. She was in front of me. She just comes on to this tiny BA fly. I've never been so starstruck in my life. She was head to toe Louis Vuitton luggage, head to toe glam. Stunning. Is she is she one of your favorites? Yes. Why is she one of your favorites? We just love bread, right? We love we, we love. We would die for bread. I I. I Why would we die for bread? Jamie then tried to find her afterwards to get a photo with her, and I was like, all right. I said you should get a photo with her, and you didn't want me to do that. Because I thought we could become friends, and she's not going to become friends with me. She thinks I'm a fan. Why on earth would she become friends with you? Why wouldn't she? 
Because she doesn't know you and she lives in New York. I know, but if I was sat next to her, I would have become friends with her. Okay, let's role play this. Okay, I cannot wait for this. I cannot wait for the conversation that you'd have with this person, Bryn, who you know and you're a fan of. So I'm Bryn, you're Sophie. Spark up the conversation, go. We're on the flight. Oh, sorry, sorry. Don't worry, that's all right. Where are you off to? Greece, we're on the same flight. <laughs> Oh, wait, sorry, that's not how Okay, we'll start again. Here we go. Okay, fine, here we go. <clears throat> cold on this fly, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. They always keep it cold. I would go in with that <laughs> because she was cold too. She had a scarf around her. Okay, so, so let's do it again. Okay, wait. Okay, here we go. Go on. Oh, cold on this fly, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a bit cold. That's why I've got my jacket here. That's such a good idea. Where is your accent from? It's American. New York? Yes. Amazing. I've never been to New York. We actually got on a flight and it was cancelled recently. Oh, that's such a shame. You should go sometime. And you're going to Mykonos, so that's quite a far place to go. Who are you going with? <laughs> Flirting. <laughs> Do I going wait? by myself. What? And I would wink. Go, go, going by myself. Who are you with? My husband. You can come join us for dinner. We're going to meet up with some friends. Who are your friends out there? You don't know them, but... Um, <laughs> I, oh, hang on. I would just go straight in. Oh, um, David Beckham and Victoria. <laughs> We've got a table booked at... Um, we got a boat day, but you're welcome to come if you want. Shall I? Do you want to take my number? Where's the boat going from? The port. Okay, great. What's the boat called? Scorpios. <laughs> it's honestly, this is how you would spark up the yes, conversation. Yes, and she it. would be like, David Beckham, Victoria, I'm in. Best friends. Oh, I my. saw that she was on a boat the whole time. Okay, what else happened on our trip, which was amazing? Sophie had one of the worst massages of her entire life. Oh my God, where was that? That was so bad. What did that woman do? She got her nails. Explain it though. So we all have, or we decided to have a massage on yeah. our last day because we wanted to relax and chill and go, right, we're going to go home soon. So let's make it all relaxing. And they came to our room. I had a, a guy who was an amazing massager and you had a woman who was what, pretty weird. I think she put a whole bottle of oil on me so like her hands were just full. They couldn't stay on me anyway. They just slipped off every time she touched me, slip off. And then she got her nails like this and her nails were not filed. So they were jagged. And oh, she went so good. round her nails. No palm, just nails. Tickling, like, tickling like, Sophie's back. You know when you crumble a crumble, you do the crumble with the butter and the flour. That motion, but on my back with jagged nails and like jagged dry skin that was cutting. It was like cutting every part of me. The funniest thing. And I was like, J you have to stop. Uh, the whole time I was thinking, what will I say to her? Because I was so angry. And then I felt bad afterwards. So I was like, thank you very much. The really funniest much. thing about the whole massage is I realized you weren't enjoying it. And the woman who was massaging you kept doing this. He oh, was so <laughs> making, weird. making a laughing noise. I know, I felt he bad. <laughs> I was like, oh God, this woman's so scary. Why does she keep making that weird noise? I know, really bad. Oh. Very oniony fingers too. Oh my God. So anyway, we came back. We're back from Mykonos. We're back with a bang, baby. And there is so much going on. I am more anxious than ever about this house renovation. Well, we've got Jojo, our interior designer, coming on today, and hopefully everyone can see what I'm dealing with. What do you mean, what are you I'm dealing, dealing with? I'm dealing with, like, it's manic. It's giving wedding 2.0. But luckily, I'm not letting any of your stress come on to me this time. Do you want to play a little game? What, before we go into listeners' messages? Sophie's Dictionary Corner. Okay. Say the theme tune. Ba -da -ba 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 Dictionary Corner. Uh. Okay. I've got two words here and they're based around sex and relationships. You need to tell me what you think they mean. Got it. Shexting. Shexting. Mm -hmm. Shexting. Shexting. You do this a lot. It's something to do with texting where, where you send messages, Shek? Where you, where you send messages asking to have sex? Beep, shitting and sexting at the same time. Oh. oh, God, sorry. I didn't mean he does that a lot. I thought I read it sitting and shitting and texting. I hope you don't sex anyone because you're not sexing me. <laughs> and if you were doing it whilst you were shitting, that would be wrong. I, you, you think that I, I shit and sexed you? No, I think you shit and text. But yes, shitting and sexting at the same time, that's right. You, you've never, ever sexed me in your entire life. Not once. Not once in your entire life. Have no, you? I haven't. And I'm never going to. Why don't you? Because let me tell you this, boys. Every girl who is sexing you is sat in their pajamas with pseudocrime on their face, watching TV, being like, oh, yeah, I can't wait for you to do that for me. 
You're married to me, so I'm not trying to impress you. Go on, give it a go. What would you if you go, no. no, no, go on, just But the fact that boys think that girls are actually They are doing that. No, they're not. They're, they're literally hundreds. sat like watching like Real Housewives being like, oh my god, yeah, I'd love for you to do that. And what do you think the boys are doing? Wanking. <laughs> they're not. Yes. You think they are? You think the boys are sitting there wanking while texting? Okay, this is taking a ABC sex. ABC sex. ABC. ABC sex. This is quite us. A very vanilla sex. Not bad. Describes conventional sex, but a kind that only occurs anniversaries, birthdays, and Christmas. That is quite you. So, uh, so. Well. <laughs> that is quite you. Yeah, I think at some point, because when we get the new house, we just got to be a bit more frisky, I reckon. In the new house, we can do it. I don't know what you're on about. We, Sophie has this weird way of initiating sex. Honestly, it's, it's absolutely bizarre. What she'll do is the way she'll initiate it is she'll smack my bum. <laughs> so, Guys, let me tell you, I'm not initiating sex. You come in and your bum looks smackable so I smacked your bum. Then you try to have sex with me. I was like, that's not what I want to do right now. You do. In the morning, you smack my bum. No, no. And that's initiating You were lying it. with the bare bum so I smacked your bum. Yes. And you were like, oh, I know what she wants. <laughs> Wrong. So how do you initiate it? I don't. No, but if you were going to initiate, how would you initiate? I it? wouldn't. Come on. Anyway. No. Oh, oh god, this is what I'm dealing with. Okay, are you ready, honey? For yeah. listeners' messages. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Guys, Sophie and I absolutely love HelloFresh because it makes meal prepping so much easier and it's subscription. We have just ordered one of our favorite boxes. And firstly, when you dive in, it's got all of your ingredients in the box, which I can get out for you, but also has your little recipe book right here that does a step-by-step -step way of cooking it. It gives you the timings, it gives you the ingredients, it tells you the time it's gonna take, 35 to 40 minutes. Try and guess what it is. Um, Red curry. A vegetable Thai yellow curry. Boy, that is am I not good. bad. In the box, you ready for this, honey? Check Go out for the, it. What's that? A courgette. Play a couple of games of that, sis. In no. the kitchen. Also, if you're vegetarian, it's very easy. You just get a little veggie box. Honey, I love it. Do you want to know what else is great? What you can get sixty percent off your first box, twenty five percent off for two months, and a free dessert for life. If you want to go and get that deal that Sophie just said, all you've got to do is go to www.hellofresh.co.uk forward slash newlywedf4l or scan the QR code on the screen right now and it'll take you straight there. Some people say hello fresh. I say hello easy life. Okay, you ready for listeners' messages, honey? Boy, am I ready, Liam Gallagher. <laughs> Sorry? Liam and Noel Gallagher. Who are? By the way, we can't go to Glastonbury this year. Next year? Next year, we can't go. Why? It's Bella's wedding. So are you just dropping on me that on the podcast? I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm so confused. I, I love it. That's where your brain goes. That as soon as well, we start you listening really to messages. You're excited I about am. going to Oasis because you think they're going to headline. Yes. And I'm saying, beep, we can't. So you decided to tell me that on the podcast? Why wouldn't I? It's an open forum. This is how authentic we are, guys. It's truly the only time we get to talk. Do you know how big Oasis are? I think they're going to headline Glastonbury. Well, we're not going, but we can go to their concert. Do you know any Oasis songs? Wonderwall, you're my wonderwall. Sing, sing the beginning of it. You're my wonderwall. Oh, my Lord. Okay, let's just get into listeners' messages. Here we go, honey. I have a poo story from Anonymous. Perfect. I have a poo story for you. <laughs> My family and I, it's so good. It's already beginning so good. My family and I were wild camping at the weekend, AKA no toilets and not near a bush. My two children and husband were asleep in the camper, which is really just a transit van converted with some beds in. I could feel my tummy gurgling at night. I was praying it was just farts. But when 5 a.m. comes, Instant panic hits when I know explosive diarrhea is imminent. I only had one choice, and that was to use my two year old's potty. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not the potty. I clambered around trying to find space to navigate my large ass. <laughs> a potty that's big for a two year old's Into round. this tiny, innocent ladybird potty. <laughs> 
<laughs> and thankfully, just in time for the worst shits of my life. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> I sat there looking around the silence of the night whilst my cute cat kid slept and I was destroying their potty and thought, Christ alive, how grateful I was for this little lady bird. <laughs> anyway, once empty, I thought, what the fuck am I going to do with the potty full of shit? They will be awake soon. <laughs> no. I find it so good. I only had one choice, but to put it in the bin bag and carry it to the nearest industrial bin. <laughs> Off I went, carrying my own shit down the road, waving at the early dog walkers, and I got rid of the evidence. Once calmly back in the camper, the panic came over me again. <laughs> I was going to shit again. <laughs> and I took... <laughs> You're joking, right? <laughs> and I got rid of my only form of toilet... <laughs> I don't believe it. You look like you're about to burst. <laughs> My creative brain kicked in. <laughs> I lined a cereal bowl with a nappy. <laughs> it's so good, honey. This is very good. I like it a lot. And I had to aim my butt into this little bowl whilst trying to fool and not crush the bowl and its contents. Are you not imagining this? I'm more just like I can't get over your reaction. Oh, my God. I tied up my little nappy sack and off I went and down to the road to the bin to dispose of my insides. It's safe to say I didn't eat for the rest of the day in fear. My children never found out where their potty went. And I casually made them all breakfast thinking, if only they saw your mother an hour ago, you'd disown me. That <laughs> is fantastic. That was your favourite one, yeah, isn't it? My God. It's the way she described it, her large ass <laughs> trying to get into the body. <laughs> and also going so low. She basically like <laughs> sat on the floor. It's also she's in a camper van with everyone there. <laughs> Okay, right. Oh, God. I've got a reno story, a renovation story from Liam. Come on. During the chaos of our house renovation, my dad had a memorable mishap that he still loves to bring up. (laughs) One day, he decided to check on the progress, frustrated that the work was dragging on longer than expected. As he was wandering around, he made his way down to the cellar, only to find himself trapped inside due to a dodgy lock. He tried yelling for help, but all the builders were elsewhere in the house and no one could hear him. Time ticked by and nature started calling. (laughs) With no way out and no other option, Dad had to do what he had to do and take a tinkle in the corner of that dusty old cellar. Eventually, a builder happened to wander down and found him, but by then, Dad was far from amused. The builder came down to release him from the cellar, which now stank of piss. Oh, my God. To this day, he never misses an opportunity to remind us of his cellar incident, and it's safe to say... He's still not over it. Oh, my God. Getting stuck down there would be the worst thing in the world. I just think of the rats. Is that what you'd think of? Yeah. I got a love story from Emily. In 1944, when Nana was 11, the girls' school in our, in our town, Horsham, was being built. This meant that they shared the boys' school. There was a fence that separated the playground in two, and they would walk to a local hall for lunch. This was done at separate times for the two genders. It was as their lines walked past one another on the way to and from lunch that my granddad first saw my nana. Nana was and is an enthusiastic swimmer. She would swim at the local leisure centre regularly. One day when walking through the park on her way home, swimming gear in hand, my granddad saw her again. Deciding this was his chance, he cycled past her. Grabbing her bag, he swiftly climbed a tree with it. He said to Nana, I will only get it down for you if you go to the pictures with me. She agreed. From there, their love blossomed. They would hold hands through the fence at break time, steal kisses in the local woods on their way home from school, and began to build a life together. Nana's father had no marriage before 21 rule, but at 18, she told her dad to get a suit as he had a wedding to attend. Seeing the man my granddad was growing into, he gladly agreed. Nana and granddad were together and inseparable from the age of 11 until my granddad passed away on the 11th of April, 2017. As their proud granddaughter, I can say I never saw them argue once, only silly bickering over taking care of one another. I can only hope that one day I experience a love so true and faithful. It is thanks to them that I believe true love and soulmates do exist. Oh, that's so... Holding hands through the fence. Oh, that's so sweet. I can't bear it. Isn't that wonderful? 
So sweet. Do you think that'll be us? 100%, honey. If you support me. With what fence? No, just a metaphorical one that will come between us sometimes in our life. And we'll just dip a finger through. And we'll just keep holding hands through it. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. If you enjoyed all of that, thank you so much for sending in all of your little stories. Please keep sending them in. We want renovation stories. We want love stories. We want crazy stories, poo stories, sex stories. All of it. Please send it into at newlyweds podcast on instagram or newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk on email everything is in the show description so if that's the end of listeners messages guys very exciting we are about to have jojo on the podcast who is helping us with our house renovation she's an interior designer she has her company house nine which is incredible she has helped us with loads of different things and she's about to come on to hopefully make my nerves a little calmer because honey i'm anxious don't worry, honey. She's going to calm those nerves. I'm anxious about everything. I know. You are an anxious boy. I'm really anxious. You're an anxious boy. Let's go. <laughs> no, I, come, you've got to help me a little bit. Here. Jamie, I don't know how to calm those nerves of yours. It's all in your head. Just take a leaf out of my book. All and right. Just chill. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, Jojo. Jojo. Jojo, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, Thanks so for having excited. me. Oh, my God. Jojo, I have so many questions for you. It's frightening. But I think before we even kick off, you need to explain to everyone who you are and what you do. Yeah, I'm I'm Jojo and I'm an interior designer. Um, I am the owner of House Nine Design. Mm -hmm. And we are a London-based studio. And we work on beautiful homes and hotels in England and all around the world, actually. Everywhere. Really? Do you do everywhere? We do. We do Where's everywhere. Where's your most exotic place that you're doing? The Maldives. <gasps> you're oh, not. Get out of here. Yeah. You're doing a house, a villa in the Maldives? No, we were doing some hotel resorts in the Maldives. Yeah. Oh my God. Do you I get to fly out? Do. Find out yeah, we were. We were full on flying out there. COVID kind of scuppered it a little bit. <laughs> oh, that really fucked us. That really fucked us. <laughs> Damn that COVID thing. <laughs> that that really COVID thing messed was things up for us. But for a good three years, we had a great time in the Maldives. No way. Yeah, we designed, we were designing quite a few resorts there. Yeah, honestly, for about oh, sorry, what a lie. two, three years, it was, yeah, flying out there. So were you always good at, like, seeing patterns, understanding, like, interior, really understanding what goes together in houses? Yeah, I think intrinsically it's just something you, you've either got it or you don't. I'm, I would say that's safe to say, but, like, style, right? So I think I always loved design as a kid I was always like getting fabrics and seeing how I could piece them together and like making clothes for Sylvanian families and like I was Aww. always creative I mean I was really not very good at school like I was not very intellectual so creativity was my output so that was always kind of my thing I guess and then I got pushed into working property I think Foxton's was actually my first job my, my mum really? was like seriously go and get a job like do something so I got my little mini and I was like so chuffed working at Foxton's <laughs> in Putney <laughs> And then um, was like, this isn't really what I, where I want to be long term. So, I, But I knew the thing that I, gave me a real buzz was going into people's houses and like understanding the spaces and also just being like totally blown away by how awful most interiors are. And just like, <laughs> God, this is just needs some help. I can help. Like, I can help. And I remember I once went to this estate agent and I was like, I pitched to him this idea that I could basically be his lettings manager, but also his interior designers that we could pitch to clients like, let's come in and change your house a little bit to try and get you more money. And of course, I got in there and it didn't happen. So I flipped the uh, flat I bought with my dad, took the money and put myself into design school eventually. Went to KLC Design School, wow. which is amazing. Um, and then that's it. That was nine years ago. No, no, it wasn't. My business I started nine years ago. I'm way older than that, sadly. Um, <laughs> rewind. <laughs> God, I'm so old now. I can't even remember how long I've been doing this. About 18 years ago. Wow. Yeah. 18 years so ago. Been design. Design. No, 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 no. <laughs> Shit, I went I just, to design school. Did I just add yeah. 10 years? I, school I need some more ago. Botox. <laughs> um, yeah, that was about, yeah, so 18 years ago I've been doing it. Wow, yeah. that's so amazing. I, I'm, I'm going to say you're in quite good hands. I'm going to just put it out there and say you're in good hands. Oh, yeah. For it feels sure. like we're in really good Thanks, hands. It honestly really does. It's oh. amazing. Also, I'm full of anxiety about it. You are. I don't know why. Can you sense it? I can sense well. it. So if you, see, you seem so chill and <sighs> Jamie's all, all wound like, up. It's wound up energy. Yeah. It's like pent up. I, it get, what it does is it makes me not breathe looking at you in these meetings. We're all there. There's so many gorgeous colors and you're just... It's because you guys, you haven't done a full-on renovation like this. Never. It's a huge Anything. amount of money. It's like your biggest investment. Yes. It's a lot. It's a lot. 
I get it. It's a, it's so it's, much, yeah. and there's so many things that can go wrong and go right, and it's just and the budget. The big thing is right is like you pick a budget for if you're you're buying a house or you're wanting to do some work and maybe you want to paint it maybe you, you want to do the full nines and you're going the whole way and doing it whatever it is the budget seems to move every step of the way. Well, it it shouldn't though, and this is why I think everything feels really daunting in, in the first instance because you're starting this from scratch, and therefore everything's up in the air. There's loads of balls up in the air, so it's the beginning of a project is about grabbing the balls and bringing them down and starting to make sense of them all and budget is everything like going into a project knowing what your budget is is key for us it's one of the most important questions for us How i was do you slightly concerned this morning when we've all decided what we're doing we've seen all the plans and then you were like no we're gonna scrap that room that room and that room yeah we're scrapping every room that we don't need to do yeah you were scrapping the rooms well, as well. Well, I'm just doing it, but secretly I'm going to Jojo. Well, like, we're not scrapping. <laughs> no, we're not. In the background. Her, I'm her, like, her, like, her, like, still singing her eye. Like, I was like, we're still doing the bathroom, but yeah. just light runners. is what we're putting on. Yeah, you went, but you're serious? quite like, you, you went, went to the loo and she was like, put it all back in. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's going to work harder. I did go to the loo. I did go to the loo and you were... Yeah, that yeah. happened. Are that you happened. Yeah. shitting me? Sophie, I've got your back. Oh, Jojo, can I ask you a question? Okay, you, you've been working with us for a short while now. Who is easier to work with, Sophie or I? Very Easy question. different. Okay. Very go. different. Well, for a start, I'd like to, just starting this off, I obviously got Sophie's Pinterest boards. So Sophie, which apparently you didn't even know anything about. <laughs> it didn't know existed. You're like, what's it going to look like? And I was like, well, I'll ask you what. I've been collating things for months. Do you know what's so funny? As a designer, one of my... we. I think now we've got a very much a house style. So House Nine's style is like quite timeless, quite mm. authentic, quite livable. And our colours are very inspired by nature. Can you explain that just again? Just so, so what? Because what, I don't understand what that means. I understand <laughs> what it means, but I don't quite understand what that means. So we like to create interiors that are inspired by nature. So very textural. Everything's quite muted. You won't get garish colours. I mean, it's all very sort of quite more tonal. It's really livable. Everything feels very calm. It feels quite sort of... Everything feels where it needs to be, but also it's really timeless. It's really important mm. to us. Sustainability is super important to us at our mm. practice. So it's about buying things that are going to last. We don't want to just buy tat that's going to, you know, we're going to have to throw out a year's time. We want to sort of spend the money on the right things and make sure that they last. But then everything in the house is, is going to feel like it sort of flows, but that every room has its own personality and its own character. That's really important. But your Pinterest boards were, you love an arch. Which I I, obviously anyone that knows House but it's Nine so funny, will know. I didn't we love even know I loved arches until you pointed that yeah, out. But obviously, so many. No, we so don't many have any arches. arches in the house. You're going to have some arches. In the How? House. How are you going to make it? We're going to pop some in there. What? It's like we're going to become a church. If, if someone is listening to this right now and they're wanting to renovate their own house without you or help or an interior designer or anything, how would you go about creating a budget for yourself? It's planning is everything. Like uh, my my number one bit of advice: do not start on a project. And I have so so many people are like, "Oh my god, right, I've got the keys to the house," and then the contracts are starting next week, and I'm like, well, "What have you What have you got?" And they're like, "I don't know yet. Um, I think I really like this, and I like this." And it's like you've got to pull it together. So start from scratch. Start mood boards. Mood boards is key, and then little Excel spreadsheets. Just start to plan. Think about what goes in the room. So take a, take a bedroom. Yeah. You're going to have one bed. You're going to have two beds or tables. You're going to have two lamps. You're going to have however much. Write everything down that you need to buy and put a PC sum, like an estimate of everything next to it. And do that for every room. It might sound re a really long process, That's but it's the best it. way to really know your budget because it's all very well saying, I've got 150 grand to design my house and here I go. The contracts are starting next week. Well, what have you selected? How much are you going to, you don't know. So plan, 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 plan. I can't stress that more, honestly. It's so important. Jojo, they say that one of the most stressful mm. things in the entire world, or the third most stressful thing is moving house. And, and, and the other one is divorce. So we don't want one to lose the, the other. What's the other? It's, 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 it's losing a family getting member. Getting married has got to be out there. It's losing a family member, getting divorced and and ch and moving house. There's got to be some kids in there somewhere. Uh, no, are, maybe no, that's four. Don't say <laughs> that as well. There's got to be getting married. That was the most stressful time of my life. Actually, no, I'm sure it's marriage. <laughs> I I'm am sure too. it's marriage, divorce and moving house. Do you know when it was bliss? So we've God. done when the was... marriage, we get it moving house, and then we're going to get a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, I can't wait for that one. <laughs> You've got that to look forward to. I can't wait. No, I'm going to make sure you're not going to get a divorce because we're going to enjoy this. The I'm going to go into, I want to go into our style and things like that. Yeah, let's do um, it. Have you ever uh, looked after a house or had a couple and halfway through they've got a divorce or something bad has happened yes. to it? Yes. Perfect. That's actually funny. No way. <laughs> yeah, way. 
And then the funniest no thing, and then, the, and then I actually had to end up, I took him on as a client and he bought literally a bachelor pad and I had to, t- and it was, the design was so different. <laughs> he made a sex room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> oh. And he had a really wandering eye as well. I was like, so <laughs> I was like, oh my God, is, that, is he trying it on? Oh my God. Oh, this is so weird. No, yeah. you're joking. No. That's going to be <laughs> That's, that's going to be me. What are you talking about? It's more likely you to divorce me than get a bachelor. Some sort of like and then get a sex room in my, ba- in my like, what can you call it? Not a bachelor app, my woman. Your bachelorette. My, my woman, bachelorette pad. My bachelorette yeah. pad. Wow, so that has actually happened. That's wow. happened once to me. That's happened once. Couples <laughs> have arguments during this process. Yeah, yes. Yeah, because, it, well, men and women are different. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, Mars and Venus. I mm. mean, and therefore there is always going to be a conflict. It is funny because at the beginning of a process, when we're working with a couple, there, are, there, is so, there is such a distinct line between the way women treat things and men are about things, or the things that they request. There's, like certain requ- there's certain requests that are just an absolute, like, massive TV, like unnecessarily yes. large TV. Ugh. It's always a thing. That's, That's what I that's, want. Yeah. Everything and they don't. Also, you guys don't get cushions. Actually, I'm quite pleased to got cushions. Lots no. of cushions on beds. We, we, why, like, not not needed. What are the things? Like, uh, just it's uh, all about that. Like TV. It's kind room, of yeah. It's it? techy stuff. Well, not yeah. Modern. It's more modern. I don't think they men don't get the sort of layering so much. No, it's all this layering stuff. I'm so excited for a massive TV. That's what I can't wait for. Yeah. I almost want to get a golf simulator in the house at some point or something. Well, no. Like that. Mm, I don't know where that's going to go. I'm gonna, it's going to go in somewhere. In where, where you're going to sleep the End of the garden. End of the garden. End of the garden. Exactly. And so that's what I'm... I'm really excited about all those things. What I'm really excited is, is getting surround sound in yeah. the house so I can play Cindy Lauper and things in the morning. Oh, yeah, girls just want to have fun. I just can't. Yeah, that's okay, what, great. That's what I okay. literally... That's what you want to play? Okay. My, my biggest dream is to wake up in the morning, stroll into the shower, and go, oh, what am I going to listen to today? And just... In the shower? In the shower. Girls, oh. Just to want to have fun. Yeah, in the shower. Oh, wow. That's okay. what I want to do more than... That's your biggest dream. a lot about you. In that's this interesting. I, I must add that to the brief. <laughs> I, I, what do you think our style is? Or Sophie's style more Okay, likely? so Sophie's style. So when we first get Pinterest boards, which I, every client I work with and anyone out there listening needs to start a Pinterest board because it's a brilliant tool and it's an amazing, you fall down a Pinterest hole, at work we call it a Pinterest hole, where you go to look for one thing and then an hour in, you're like, God knows where, like you've got a million things pinned and you're like, I don't know where I am. I'm designing someone else's house here. Yeah. I don't even work with them yet, but I will one day. It's like a great place to manifest. Um, but so you've obviously got a really clear sort of eye for very tonal mm. design. Everything's sort of lovely browns and neutrals and oatmeals. It's all blacks, sort of trims. I'd say it's quite LA inspired. It's quite American. A lot of your Pinterest board, apart from us, of course, was quite LA really? American inspired. Yeah, all American designs. Yeah, lovely oh, high funny. ceilings, quite pared back, but then sort of these masculine details of like black and dark woods, and it's beautiful. Really, and like, it's really quite nice taste. All the and same. I'm not just saying that as well. I would. T- I'm the sort of person I would tell you if I didn't like approve. I'm, I'm really so honest. So sometimes like, that's awful. You get a Pinterest board and you're like, mm, <clears> yeah, no. Sometimes I'll be like, what is she showing me on there? What is that? Because that's very. And and then I'll I'll ask. I'll be like, I like that that, but not on the rest. But the, honestly, the whole thing was like, I really liked it. Okay, it was really great. useful. It was basically yeah. like everything you do. I right? yeah. would have just pinned your whole intro. Your Instagram. Jay, oh, can I okay, can I ask another thing? So if you had to describe our plans that we have so far at yeah. the moment, what would you say the plans of the house is looking like? Okay, so come through the entrance hall door. On the right, you've currently got a study. Mm. And at the moment, the current owners have the kitchen in the middle of the house. Which is weird. Which didn't work. And then it, That got, was strange. It is strange. And then you've got a couple of steps down. And then you've got this beautiful big room, south facing room into the garden, which is currently a sort of living room, dining area. So what we're doing is flipping it. So we're putting the whole, the kitchen on the back of the house, which is just like primo. Yeah. And then moving, and then we're creating your lovely, but that's actually not what you wanted originally. I think we were going to put the kitchen, but you wanted a snug at the the back by the garden. But instead, we've shifted it. And I was told I wasn't allowed this by you guys. we weren't. This is so unfair. Can I just clarify Mm. that I never wanted that? So when he fed those designs to you, I was like, no, no. There's a really good reason, though, because we're we're introducing this beautiful roof light over your over your kitchen yeah. so the roof light is obviously like a big lantern that we're cutting out of the ceilings so that you're going to get all this lovely natural light flooding into this room 
If you are sitting in a living area that's got a TV and you're in a south facing room, you're not going to really be able to see it very well. So I honestly was doing it with your. Yeah. I, just, like, oh, I, was I just, just like, disagree with you guys. I, I just don't well, think that's true. Good luck. I, I don't. I, I had. I was just thinking about you, Jamie, when I thought about this. It was absolutely. Exactly. Do you well, know what? We both were. Yeah, we were. You won't be able to watch. You couldn't watch your TV. You can't watch Cindy Lauper. No gaming perform. and stuff. It's a terrible place for it. I uh, what I've worked on about the house. I don't get my little um, snug at the end of the kitchen. I don't get that. I also have worked out that my my closet is in the basement. It is. Yes. It's a nice basement, though. It's a really nice it's basement. It's a really good basement right and next to the utility exercise room. exercise every day, walking up and down and the stairs mm -hmm. however many times. And Jojo said it's really good because you're right next to the utility room, so you can dry your clothes and bring them out mm. and wear them. and then Yes. <laughs> Straight from the tumble dryer. <laughs> That'd be so fresh. It's, and you've got it's this... We really like walking Lenore out there. <laughs> 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 Have we been okay and easy to work with so far? You've been really, you've been really fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are, that? you got <laughs> I paused. <laughs> you, oh, shit, I told you. No, I think you were probably, you were bugging out about the budget. But I think, again, I think it's, we're trying, we're getting there now. We had a meeting this morning, didn't we? We had a really good meeting this morning. We had a very good Starting to pull time. everything down and, and trying to sort of make sense of it all. And it's all making sense. I feel really, I feel confident about Same. it. I think it's going to be amazing. I'm calm. What about little tricks people can do? Because I think that there must be certain things where maybe some people have huge budgets, maybe some people have tiny little budgets, but there are little things that you can do to make something look amazing. Do you have any little trips or ticks? Trips tick, or tick, 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 tick. I don't have ticks. <laughs> <laughs> any <laughs> tricks or tips that you could share that would like maybe someone go, oh, that's a good idea to use in a house? I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for panelling. So I don't know even what that pa is. This is panelling. This oh. is a t type Love. of panelling. There we go. But so you can have, there are so many different types of panelling that you can have. And it's, it's a way to add architectural interest to a very boring room. So it adds interest and it allows you to kind of break up paint colours. And it's, it's one of my favourite things to do in a room. And it's pretty unaffordable. And nowadays you can literally buy packs off B&Q. You can do it yourself. Real DIY thing to do. And then painting. Like painting is just every, you can have so much fun with paint. Um, yeah, that's the, one of the best ways to transform a room. And then accessories. If you, do, if you want to work on a small budget, you can't afford to change sofas and things. It's little things like cushions and artwork and paintwork. Definitely. Why don't we just do the house ourselves? Why don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> but with your help, why wouldn't we just get our shovels ourselves and just do it? You've got to think. So. so the, and this is what I do have to try and tell clients a lot when clients sort of trying to, you know, navigate their budget and what can we do ourselves? You've got to think about your time, quantify your time and how valuable your time is. Yeah. So when you're thinking about not just the time of doing your paneling yourself, I'm talking about even the sourcing, putting it together, buying it. Is it going to get, is it broken? Are you going to have to return it? You've got to take it to the shop. You're talking about maybe, you know, a whole day and just trying to sort the logistics out of like a light being fitted in your bedroom. No. So it's a lot, it's a lot. Whereas, <laughs> no. whereas <laughs> obviously I know that it's obviously, you know, it's, it's a luxury working with a designer. I appreciate that, but it's, you can work like a designer. So if you're going to do it, you've got to, you can be careful, but I'd say the way to save yourself time is plan in the first place. I think I keep banging, God, I really, I sound like a broken record. No, plan. that's really good advice. When someone comes with you with a budget. Yeah. Has anyone come with you with a ridiculous budget? Like a real, like a baller budget? A real whopping budget. Um, no, do you know what? We haven't had a baller budget. Even the people with like the most amount of money always have a budget, which I think is good. Really? Yeah, I think most people. But what sort of budget are we talking about? It is pretty baller, actually. They're, they're, they're baller budgets. <laughs> Clients have baller just, budgets. I'm just, yes. so worried about saying it. I'm, I'm just going to say above a million. Yes. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> above yeah. two? Yes. No. <laughs> above three? No, not above. Well, yes. No, oh. yes. Yeah, actually, yeah. Wow, let's buy a house and chuck two million. Yeah. It. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. my lord. Yeah. Okay, can we just talk about timelines? Let's do, t oh, yes. Let's talk timelines. Okay, please. Mm. We need to be in by Christmas. You. <laughs> I'm really sorry that's okay. not going to happen. But Jojo. how unlikely is it? No, that Jojo, it can we happen? need to be in by Christmas. You... We plan the whole family around it. You are going to be living on a building site. No. So if you would like to live, you're going to be eating turkey, <laughs> a dusty turkey on the with kitchen no, nails. with no oven, <laughs> nothing. Literally, like are you with a light bulb hanging from the ceiling. We're not going to be in by Christmas. So, so we are, we are in September. 
Yeah. And we haven't got a contract yet and you haven't actually got the keys to the property. So where we're, we're designing, that's all great. We've still got to get the contractor agreed. He might also be busy finishing another project. We don't know that. And the process of the design and then the contract. I'm going to pin this on the contractor. It's all down to the contractor. It's not me. It's the contractor. Oh it's got to be better so, get a good contractor. Got to get a good contractor. But I think we have to be really risky. I would honestly would always say to my clients that I have to be realistic. <clears throat> I've never ever done a project in three months of this size. I think we're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> I think so we're going to do it. So what, what do you think it will be? I Re think being realistic. realistically we're looking at March. Is that being like March. really realistic? You're giving us an extra month just to prepare no, us. No, I'm going to say March. You're saying a positive yeah, realism. That's a positive is yeah. So you actually think it Six could be months. more like April? And no, March. We're, we're going to get you in by the end of March. Properly, like, the end of done. March. No, well, we Jodie, we're going to be in by Christmas. I have a feeling. I just, I, I really have a feeling we're going to be in okay. by Christmas. Do you think the first floor will be done by Christmas? Okay, another thing I always say to clients, don't, it, for, like, do everything you can to not live in a house when it's being renovated. Because doors get left open, contracts going out for a fag, there's cold air coming in, dust being blown everywhere. Mm, yeah. You've got dust all over your clothes. Dust is, builders' dust is sticky so and it settles on everything. And so when the final phase is when you have snagging and decorating, so that's when they're just rubbing down walls and decorating, that process alone can take like three, four weeks. No way. And you want everything else to be out. So you're gonna, all you're going to hear is <laughs> doors being left open. Someone going out for a cigarette, coming back in, bang, bang, bang. All, uh, it's going to drive you crazy. It'll drive you crazy. You're better off just enjoying, You, if you can, do everything you can, like live with your parents or something. I've said this. Yeah. In the countryside. I have said to Sophie, we have my dad's flat in London mm. that we could move into. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Let's do it. But would you be up for that? Yes. I, I, I don't quite know if you're you're being serious. Would you be up for that? I don't know where all my clothes are going. And you put them into storage. What you've got to think is you don't want to, this is the most important thing that, apart from getting married and, good, and not getting divorced, <laughs> is the most important thing that you're going to do and the biggest investment. And if you rush it, mm. you're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to enjoy that process. So if there's anything you can do to not live in the house or, or rush the project, then it will work out so much better. Everyone will just be little. Everyone's going to work at the same speed, but it won't be like, yeah. Okay, Jojo. So Jamie, as you know, is very bad at making decisions. Mm. Do you have any advice for the listeners, for anyone who's in decision paralysis? If you're having design paralysis over something and you can't decide, it means you're making the wrong decision. Because you should get a mm. feeling. I think you should get a gut feeling about something. Go away, take a step back. And then come back to it and look at it again. Just take a breath, like take a, take a pause. Uh, don't freak out. Do some deep breathing exercises and then come back to it. You should listen to your gut when you got married. I like stone <laughs> in the kitchen. Okay, she's just thinking about the stone in the kitchen. <laughs> can, can I ask you before you go, JJ? If, if we um, get upset or anxious, and does that mean on this process we're going to have arguments with each other? Yes, when money is involved, I think people are always going to argue. I feel like that's such a given. But you come to me and I'll be like your agony aunt. Will, will I have an aunt. argument with you? No. No, 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 no. We won't no, have arguments no, together. No, we were not going to have an argument. <laughs> okay. That's but all because we're doing everything up front. So they, they can't, we can't have an argument. You can't suddenly be like, Jojo, you told me it was going to be this. Unless that happens, then, but no, we're going to be mates through this. It's going to be good. Do you know when life was easier? Go on. When we didn't have any of this to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to worry. When we were just not even married, just hanging out as his friends. That was great. Let's just let's just go let's back. Let's go to back to doing that. Let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just go all the way back. Um, Jojo, thank you so much. Oh, you You're so, so much. welcome. You have your podcast as well. I've got a podcast. Yeah, but lots of questions like this. All the questions that you're asking mm -hmm. every week. It's called the ins and outs, and we get asked. We're kind of like the agony aunts, the ins and outs worlds, and I do it with a girlfriend of mine Polly who's a very talented landscape designer amazing and we get asked questions every week about dilemmas at home so if you have any questions head over there I don't feel any less prepared um <laughs> I feel more anxious than ever but thank you so much for coming you're on. so thank welcome you. guys you're the thanks best thanks me. Jojo thanks. that was so good oh, I love her I feel still nervous I think we could be mates Why with are you so relaxed? I don't get it. I don't it. know why you're so nervous. I get when people are nervous. You're so privileged. You've got somebody doing it all for you. What are you nervous about? 
No, you know how you were nervous for the wedding? Yes. And I supported you through that. But the wedding was so, so stressful. Well, you, but for it you, not so for me. It was so stressful. I found the wedding the worst thing ever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the wedding was terrible. So, so. But that's the pressure because I was putting on a performance for everyone. Not a performance, but like a party for everyone. So, so honey, so you, you, I didn't find that stressful, but I supported you throughout it. And I was this is you... like, it's only me who's enjoying the house. No. I'm so, and you, I guess. I get stressed about things. I get stressed about kids and stuff like this. You don't. I don't. Yeah, I'm ex- very excited. Exactly. But you get stressed about things that I don't get stressed about. Only one thing I've ever got stressed about was that wedding. Okay. And I supported you throughout it. Yes? Yes. So you have to do the same to me. I am. Here's my hand. I don't need your bloody Moral hand. support. Oh my god! All right, I just feel like this is going to end in arguments, but that's all right. I'm that's very positive. Kidding? Yeah, you kid. I'm you kid. I'm kidding. Okay. Okay, that's the end of today's episode. Well, do you know who's going to make me feel nice and calmer? Who? My mum, who's going to come on next episode. <gasps> Can't bloody wait. <laughs> so my mum, I'm going to invite her on to make me feel calmer. I think she's going to be more on my side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my mum is on next episode, so get ready for that. As always, please get in touch at Newlyweds Podcast on Instagram, or you can send us an email, newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk. Honey, we're going to see everyone next Monday for another episode. Guys, we love you dearly. If you're getting married. Good luck. If you're getting engaged. Oh, you go for it. If you're getting divorced. Ah, boo. And if you're doing a renovation. Oh, get out while you can. And if you're single. Go and have the best years of your life. Goodbye, good love you, good night. Goodbye.